Hey there, cats and kitties. I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues, and with this video, we'll be discussing my thoughts on episode 8 of the anime series One Punch Man and the Deep Sea King Cometh, baby, <laughs> wreaking all kinds of havoc. Um, this following up from, of course, the Clan of Sea Folk, the first sort of ambassador of which, if you will, is basically destroyed by Saitama. And what I really love about this episode is all these other surrounding heroes once again coming to the fort. It's not always going to be down immediately to Saitama and Genos. You're getting to see the grander scope of this world and the heroes and villains that inhabit it. And some of them are just all out kooky. Some of them are all out badass. Some of them a combination of the two. And like, for example, Moomin Rider or Licenseless Rider, as I'm told is, you know, the translation of his name, which is all kinds of hilarious, being that he's pedaling around on a bike all over the city, you know. Um, he's actually challenging himself in the wake of Saitama's growing notoriety he wants to actually challenge himself and push himself further you know get his levels within the hero association up and everything like that and I like that you know he's one of these heroes that from right off the bat he's kind of working I mean he's just you know got Saitama on the back of his bike but he's working along with them instead of immediately being like oh I'm better than you you know I'm gonna kick your ass and like all these other so-called heroes we've seen thus far that Saitama has encountered and everything like that um I like the idea that he could be an ally in the midst you know he is a part of the OP and I've been wondering how sort of influential uh to the story or involved in the story you know Moomin Rider would be and I I like that I like the idea of his being added you know, an added flavor to this sort of recipe of, of you know, the superhero genre in anime form. Um, other characters like Lightning Max, who was really kind of badass looking and actually reminded me, if you've ever played the uh, old school, I think, PS2 RPG Rogue Galaxy, the main character of that game, Jaster Rogue, this guy kind of facially embodied, even down to like having a thing on the side of his face, in this case, a lightning strike, you know, lightning bolt, whatever you want to call it. Um, you had, uh, of course, all back man toward the end with all these people in hiding you know trying to leave the city escape the city escape the havoc being wrought by the deep sea king and this guy immediately reminded me i'm watching ushio totora right alongside this show on fridays and he reminded me of akiba nagare the uh you know blonde hair flight jacket wearing dude I mean, what is it with the blonde hair flight jacket wearing dudes? They're all over the place. The baddest ass hero out of all of them in this episode, you know, arguably, at least to me, was a Puri Puri prisoner who escapes because he's getting ticked off that Lightning Max and these other guys are having their asses handed to him by the Deep Sea King. So he breaks out of prison so he can, like, start to protect them and everything. He was in prison, apparently, for uh, getting all, you know, hotsy totsy over, like, really attractive men. Okay whatever but this guy like is pummeling the hell out of the deep sea king and unfortunately it's not really having much of an effect he's still even after going into angelic mode which basically means stripping down flying through the air and just going nuclear on the deep sea king still is not having much of an effect and he ends up you know getting tossed into space or whatever it is at the end of this but i mean it was that was the baddest ass sequence of this particular episode to me and then you find out you know speed of sound sonic he actually affected an escape as well and he's dodging and flipping around with deep sea king that whole element was pretty freaking awesome as well um and he decides after having his own clothes stripped from him he's gonna make a getaway all the while genos is effectively gunning for the scene of action to try to put a stop to this and, you know, they have, like, sort of an impassing interface where Genesis is like, who was that pervert? <laughs> you know? I mean, oh, man. And then, of course, Saitama is trying to make his way. And, of course, that's where the, uh, you know, confrontation, if you will, between he and Moomin Rider take effect. They're trying to go and save the day together. But then they're split up because, you know, the call comes in. It's this way. It's that way. Everybody's getting misdirected where this is all going down. And it's where everyone has effectively gone to hide, you know. They're all in this giant dome uh, where they're hoping they're going to be safe. And this is where we have that confrontation as we end with this cliffhanger of Genos just getting there in time. And you've had the deep seeking because it's pouring rain now transformed into this like uber mode. And is it just me or is there something about his face that kind of looks reminiscent to the Joker? <laughs> Like, I don't know. Um, I noticed that in the OP, actually, if it's the same character. It kind of looked like a Joker face for a split second in the OP that, of course, Saitama ends up, 
nuclear destructing, uh, you know. But I mean, this this was all kinds of awesome. It's just really awesome seeing a villain now that, you know, it's a, it's a proper cliffhanger. Now we're going into the second episode, the second part of this story in particular. It's not all quelled in the one episode, you know what I mean? And that just ramps up my excitement, the idea that now we're dealing with a threat that at least until Saitama gets there, it's not easily dealt with. And will we see Genos shine? Will this be Genos's time to uh, step up to the plate and prove his worth and be the one to take out the Deep Sea King? Will we still fall back on our haunches and have Saitama come in at the last minute and nuclear punch this sucker out into, you know, another universe or into pieces, whatever the case may be? Um... And how will these alliances uh, remain? You know, will we see other heroes, lower class, higher class, whatever it is? Because you see Saitama getting that call at the end. You know, he picked up uh, Ryder's phone and he's talking to the Hero Alliance. And of course, now he knows that even a class S, even the topmost tier of heroes had his ass wiped away with Deep Sea King. So now he's effectively pissed. <laughs> You know? So seeing that confrontation happen, seeing the wake of whatever occurs in the next episode, how that's all going to play out with these different heroes, whether they're going to be adversarial, whether they're going to be working together and all this kind of stuff, um, I can't wait to find out. Awesome, awesome episode once again of this series. Love to hear from you guys in the comments below if you enjoyed it as much as I did. If not, why not? Let me know in the comments below. Our POVs can certainly disagree. Just love having that conversation. And so, yeah, otherwise, it'll be pretty much it for me on this. Hope this video finds you well, and I'll catch you all later. Peace.